So what would it take to build my Canyon Carver Toge Attack 350Z from scratch? I'm gonna walk you through all the modifications we made, tell you up the cost of each of these things if we were to buy them today. I'll give you actual driving impressions so you can see if they're worth it or not. My name's Chris Gaines and we're about to have some fun with this video. This is a 2005 Nissan 350Z. It has a 287 horsepower VQ35 DE motor. I bought this car in 2019 for, I want you to guess how much I got this car for and we'll reveal that with the total at the end of the video. Why a 350Z? At the time, it was the best bang for the buck, basically a poor man's M3. <laughs> When this car was released back in 2002, 2003, no one was getting 287, almost 300 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated V6 engine. And the fact that this car is still relevant today is a testament to the formula that Nissan put together. Lightweight-ish chassis, amazing stiffness, great suspension design, great handling, torquey and powerful naturally aspirated motor, and just a beautiful timeless design. So when I was sitting on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace looking for a new car to replace my old Mini Cooper S, you flap in a rear-wheel drive, manual, and sort by cheapest, there were not many other great options than this thing to be a daily driver, reliable, relatively easy to work on, and most importantly, extremely fun on all the local roads that we have here in my area of California. So let's start with the exterior. Honestly, the most noticeable and my favorite part of this entire car are these LE37 19-inch Volk Racing wheels. These things have always been my favorite wheels and realistically are the main reason that I bought this car in the first place because the previous owner had already put them on. They're also lighter than stock, around 22 pounds and extremely strong. And I have these wrapped in Continental Extreme Contact Sport tires and a 275-35-19 in the rear and a 265-35-19 in the front. Tires are the only thing connecting your car to the road, so make sure you don't cheap out on them. The first thing I did to this car was put new tires on. Anything is better than the four mismatched Walmart brand that were at each different corner of this car. They have lasted me at least 20, if not 30,000 miles. The grip on these extreme contacts is absolutely great. You would have to be doing something stupid to lose traction with as wide of tires as I have on this car on public roads. Never hear these tires chirp. That's because I'm a reasonable driver. 10 out of 10, highly recommend the uh, Continental Extreme Contact Sports. They're basically a very close competitor to the PS4S at a little bit of a discounted price. Wheels and tires combined, 4,500 bucks. Now the stock body on the Z is great. It does leave a little bit to be desired as far as aggressiveness. So what we have here is an Amazon lip that honestly, I think looks pretty good. I have this actually plasti dip. If you get close, yeah, it doesn't look great, but from any kind of distance, I think it really fits the car and fills out the front. That lip is $70. One of my favorite pieces on the car is this carbon intake duct. There's arguments on how functional these are, but I think it looks amazing with the asymmetrical intake system. At some point, I'll do a test and actually see how effective this is. Intake duct, 70 bucks. Next up are these Depot HR style headlights. Yeah, HR style, facelift, whatever. Is that a used car? I absolutely love the look of these headlights. Compared to these original headlights that came on the car, these things make the car look 20 years newer. You guys can go watch the video I did on the install. If you wanna see the process of putting them on and the actual comparison. Upgraded headlights, 800 bucks. Here's a little known trick to get you at least an extra 20 horsepower an upgraded Nismo antenna. This does nothing other than look better than your ugly stock stand-up antenna. It's got some fake carbon on it. And realistically, I'd rather have this than the stock piece. Nismo antenna, 12 bucks. Lastly, for the exterior, we have our Mishimoto uh, tuner lug nuts. These came with the car and I like the look of them. And they are prone to being damaged. A certain shop that will not be named. <coughs> Firestone. Single-handedly mangled half of the lug nuts on my car the first time I took it to a shop like less than a week after buying the car. That could explain why in the past three years of ownership, I have not taken this car back to a shop since. And lastly on the exterior, we have the Z1 Motorsports aluminum under tray. That replaced the trash, plastic, rattly, destroyed OEM plastic piece. Garbage, not garbage. It also should help with airflow underneath the car. And most importantly, it keeps your oil in your pan instead of bleeding all over the road from a stray rock. Under tray, 180 bucks. Now let's move into the engine bay and engine power modifications. I know you guys are expecting a big turbo, supercharger, etc., but we are basically stuck. We have a JWT Jim Wolf Technology Carb Legal, say it with me now, Carb Legal Pop Charger Air Intake. This does not add much power or do much other than sound awesome. 
This came with the car, so I don't really care, but the sound alone, I'd say, is worth it. Let's take a listen. <laughs> It also comes with this heat shield, which should seal against the hood, which should make it at least a bit more useful compared to a regular complete hot air intake that's not really adding any benefit whatsoever. Combined with this duct, at the very least, I shouldn't be losing any power and I'm gaining sound, so works for me. JWT Pop Charger, 110 bucks. Now, if we wanna talk about performance modifications for this platform that actually make a difference that you can feel, I kind of like parking up here because you get to see some other car enthusiasts having a blast in the same roads that I love having a blast on. All right, since we keep seeing cool cars, drop in the comments below and guess how many cool sports cars flew by while I was filming this bit. I'll pin whoever gets it right first. We have the Z1 Motorsports plenum spacer for the VQ35 DE motor. The plenum spacer works by fixing a factory flaw in the design of this motor. We have this factory strut brace and you see how the intake plenum is actually sloped forward. Over the years, people who work on this platform have realized that that sloped intake plenum actually starves the front two cylinders of as much airflow as the rear four cylinders usually get. So what they found is that by spacing out the plenum allows the proper amount of airflow to get to the front two cylinders, which increases low end torque and high end power and works with a stock tune. I 100% noticed a difference when I first installed this thing and I would do it again in a heartbeat, especially for the low, low price of $110. What's up? I have mad respect for anyone who puts holding badges on a Chevy SS. That's someone who knows what they're talking about. And last but certainly not least, we have our original Nismo S-Tune catback exhaust. You know how most people say that 350Zs sound terrible and sound like trumpets? This exhaust is none of those things. It's not insanely loud until you actually get into it, but it sounds mature is the best way I can describe it. Let's just take a listen. And if you speed up the footage a little bit, it sounds just like an F1 car. I love it. Some people might not, but I think that's one of the best sounding exhausts out there. Honestly makes the car sound exotic to me. And it's got stock cat, stock headers. So you could change it up even more by changing those parts out. Nismo S-Tune exhaust, $1,350. Now all those power mods obviously don't add much more to the car as far as dyno numbers. But I think what's more important, look at how many turns I'm taking, is the character of the engine. The Z revs so freely it's more than you need on roads like this. If you want to go freeway racing, you don't have any like good roads in your area, then I get it. But all I've done is make it better. Now we move to some performance mods that really make this car shine on Toge Canyon roads. And that is suspension and brakes. To start with, we've got Tane Street Flex coilovers dropped to about a finger in the front and the rear. I really enjoy these coilovers. They're the precursor to the Tane Flex Z coils that are available today. I feel like they were discontinued about 10 years ago, but they must have been rebuilt at some point because they still feel amazing. And the adjustment range from full soft to full stiff is definitely noticeable. We'll talk about that in a second. Ride is definitely stiff, but on any kind of decent road surface, the car is totally dailyable. When I first got the car, the coils were stuck on full stiff. Ooh, S2K. And I actually did a thousand mile road trip, lived with the car for at least, you know, three or four months before I finally fixed the issue. It definitely beat me up, but it was totally doable. We also have upgraded sway bars, front and rear. These are adjustable Hotchkiss sway bars, and these basically allow you to dial in your front and your rear body roll characteristics by putting your end links in the different adjustable holes. Before I upgraded to the wider front tires, I felt like the car was understeering a bit too much. I had 245s in the front and 275s in the rear. Mm -hmm. 
So by swapping my rear sway bar from the softest setting to the stiffest setting, I was able to mitigate a lot of the understeer effect by making the rear body roll stiffer, which transfers more weight to the front tires. The coils and sway bars combine basically to give you zero body roll and basically make the car feel like it wants to just go faster and push harder into turns. I feel like that's the major like defining feature of a sports car is once you're in a turn, the steering wheel still feels light and uh, responsive. Like it's not even aware of the forces that are at play in a 3,200 pound vehicle changing direction like this thing does. Tain Street Flex coils are about 1,600 bucks. Hotchka sway bars, $428. Now, one of the coolest parts of this car that I did not know about until I actually bought it was Tain's EDFC electronic damping force controller system. EDFC is essentially four stepper motors that mount on top of each of your struts, wired up to a control box in the center console that allows you to electronically from inside the car at any time, adjust the stiffness of your front struts and your rear struts at the press of a button. You also have three user-defined presets that you can swap between at any point. I've never had so much fun tuning my suspension as I'm driving for the exact road surface that I'm on. It made me want that type of system in every single car that I ever have from now on. And the coolest part is that style of adjustable suspension is being sold as some fancy new thing in a lot of modern cars nowadays, like BMWs up to supercars. But the fact that you can swap in an aftermarket suspension and still have that functionality for a relatively cheap price I think is really valuable. Mine came from the previous owner, a little messed up, but it works totally fine. Over here, you can adjust the stiffness of your front uh, struts, and here you adjust the rear. And I run it simply on mom mode, daily driver sport mode, and full stiff race mode. I have tuned my suspension and tuned my settings exactly to how I want the car to drive, and I cannot think of a way that you could dial that in as nearly as fast as I have done if you were to have to stop the car, get out of it, twist each knob individually. I feel like you just wouldn't get nearly as much benefit out of having the adjustable suspension as you do with a system like that. Press a button right here, and now our suspension is in full stiff. The steering gets even lighter and more responsive on a relatively smooth road. Can you see a difference between full soft and full stiff? We'll go full soft. Full stiff. You can really feel it around town on less than ideal roads. You can get a used basic EDFC system just like mine for about 321 bucks. Now, arguably one of the most important things that you can do to your car is once it gets higher up in the mileage is to replace all of your factory rubber worn out suspension bushings, in my case, with upgraded polymer units. For example, on the Z, the differential bushings, they're fluid filled and they tend to leak and basically cause a huge slack feeling in the drive line. So when you press the gas, you have to basically wait a second before you actually get acceleration. Combined with the car's already super awkward clutch situation, that made the car really difficult to get off the line, really sloppy to shift and when I put the new differential bushings in that car I was literally mind blown it felt so much better power transfer was immediate from the throttle shifts were smoother and it can prevent wheel hop as well if you're into drifting we also did polymer motor mounts transmission mounts and Z1 Motorsport subframe bushing inserts. All those things combined and fixed the worn out factory rubber, but also elevated the car's performance to the next level as far as driver feel and feedback when you're driving down the road. I think the best way to demonstrate improved bushings is to just hit the throttle, see how immediate everything is. Your grandma's Altima is not going to react to inputs like that. So the whole bushing package, $800. To go along with our driver feel mods, we also did a stainless steel clutch line and stainless steel brake lines to make our foot a lot happier when we're pressing those two pedals. <laughs> oh, holy crap, dude, what's, what's up, man? What's up? Nothing much. Yeah, dude, I saw you, I was like, oh my gosh, is that the orange yeah. 350 with the BMW decal? <laughs> I think the video I just saw today was a uh, colder intake worth it. I saw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, more Miatas, let's go. Nice to meet you, dude. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I check out your 350? I don't need that, yeah. yeah.
We went all out with the braking system. We got a set of Z1 Motorsports two-piece rotors, upgraded Brembo brakes from the performance trims of the 350 like the Track Edition, and Carbotech XP10 and XP8 racing brake pads front and rear. And we have EBC slotted rotors in the rear. Are they worth it? I'd say so. I can't get into someone else's car and drive it right off the bat because their brakes feel like you get nothing for like half the pedal. Whereas my car, I just tap the brakes and I'm already decelerating as fast as I need to for just, you know, daily street driving. The price for stopping on a dime, 1700 bucks. Now let's move on to the interior. The interior is where you spend 99.9% .9 of your time, so you definitely don't want to neglect it. The Z interior is already great for what I want to do with it, so we just have a few additions. We have an extended gas pedal at the special edition Nissan 380 RS. It makes heel towing much easier than it was uh, stock, because you can just roll your foot over to the side instead of having to rotate your foot off the brake. 35 bucks and a torque solution short shifter that has about a 33% throw reduction from stock. I already loved the Z stock shifter. It was way tighter, way more aggressive than any manual car I've ever driven. And the torque solution shifter just, you know, added to that vibe, just added to that feel. It makes your shifts crisp, quick. It really showcases the quality of your transmission if, say, the previous owner has destroyed some synchros or something, which may or may not be the case in my car. 200 bucks. A Tomei Duracon shift knob that does not get very hot in direct sunlight. 30 bucks. The sound system is a must on a daily driver. We have a Pioneer AVH211EX head unit, a kicker 10 inch sub, upgraded Hertz woofers and tweeters, and the doors. That's 1350 bucks. Last but not least, we have a red stitched Alcantara shift boot and Nismo floor mats on both sides. I've got a Nismo exhaust, that's so close enough. 40 bucks and 60 bucks well spent. And when we total everything up, our final number is $14,078. In 2019, I spent $5,500 on this car. And when you add on the price of the car, we get $19,578. Not bad for a 20 year old sports car that costs 30 grand brand new. Were you guys close? Thankfully, I did not spend nearly that much money getting this car built because a lot of the stuff was done previously or I got for much cheaper. That said, what's next for the Z? Alcantara headliner, swapping up the diff fluid, new rear wheel bearing, detailing the engine bay, fixing the caliper paint job that I screwed up. I'll explain more about that in my painting your brake calipers video. And we have to do the dreaded valve cover job that a lot of people hate on these engines. I'll also be dropping a lot of videos on some of these installs that I did in the past. So let me know what you'd like to see first. That's everything that's on the Z right now. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. And I've just gotta say, we just hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. It feels literally out of nowhere, and I wanted to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you who watches my videos, likes, has subscribed, and has been supporting me on this journey. We're now on the road to 100K, so stick around if you want to see me do more stuff to the Z, do more car experiments, watch us build the E36. Like always, don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Chris Gaines. So until next time, we're onwards and upwards.